Hello, I'm standing here in North Derbyshire, just 13 miles from the University's Chesterfield campus. In this module, we'll be studying the meaning of public health and the essential elements of public health practice. I thought a good place to start would be with a true story that happened over 300 years ago, here in the village of Eam. At its core, one could argue public health is about protecting and promoting the health of a population. And in this case, this was the inhabitants of the village, which at that time numbered around 700 people. Determinants of health in the 17th century in England were very different from today. Back then, the modern theories of disease causation were unknown, and medicine was still based on the work of Galen, the ancient Greek physician. No one understood the important role hygiene had to play in preventing infection, and there were no modern medicines like antibiotics. In 1665, the bubonic plague was rife in southern England, especially London. Many English people outside London lived in small towns or villages, working on the land. Here in the village of Ean, Alexander Hatfield lived in this house with his wife Mary. He was a tailor and had ordered cloth from London. The delivery from his London supplier took place in late August 1665. George Vickers, who lodged with the couple and was Hatfield's assistant, unpacked the boxes and he noticed that the cloth was damp and had an unpleasant smell. It was therefore laid out to dry in the house by the fire. It appears that the cloth was infected with fleas and these fleas carried and spread the plague virus. Within a week, George was dead and he was the first of many victims. Over the next few days, five more villagers died and there was fear of the disease spreading and taking more lives outside the village. The Reverend William Mompesson was the vicar in the village at that time. Along with the previous incumbent, Reverend Thomas Stanley, they gained the agreement of the villagers to do three things to try to control the spread of the disease. Firstly, they stopped organised funerals. People who died from the plague were buried in often unmarked graves near their homes. Mompesson also closed the church and decided to hold his services outside in the open air. He encouraged his congregation to stand in small family groups, separated from others, as he believed this would reduce the chances of catching the disease. And lastly, they somehow managed to persuade the villagers not to flee to the nearby city of Sheffield or to other parts of the country. Instead, they decided to effectively cut themselves off from everyone outside the village to prevent the disease spreading. In effect, they quarantined themselves. This led to problems as to how the residents of Eam would continue to receive their food and provisions. but they were helped by people from neighbouring villages who left them food here at the Boundary Stone on the outskirts of Eam. In return, the villagers would leave them money in holes made in the stone, which they washed through with water or soaked in vinegar to do all they could to try to stop the disease spreading. The death toll in the village was high as whole families succumbed to the plague. In total, about 290 villagers lost their lives. This story highlights some of the essential elements of public health still relevant today. The importance of leadership, acting early to control communicable disease, and working together as a community to promote health. However, it also highlights the self-sacrifice of the people of Eam, who because of the quarantine, surely prevented the plague spreading across the north of England, and thereby saved thousands of lives. <laughs>